peace be unto you from God our Father, from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our text this morning is our gospel reading, and I want to read just a few verses again. Matthew 5, beginning in verse 13, Jesus says, You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, how can it, how can its saltiness be restored? It's no longer good for anything, but it is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on the lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. Amen. This is our text. Let us pray. Praise yes. God. Once again, we acknowledge your awesome presence, your light, love, power in our lives. Thank you, O oh God, for shining that bright light on us, in us, and through us. Enable us, O oh God, empowered by your Holy Spirit to be the light that you have called us to be in the world in which we live. God, I pray that the words of my mouth, the meditation of our collective hearts, would indeed be acceptable in your sight. You are our strength. You are our redeemer, yes. our sustainer. Amen. Amen. For just a few moments, I want to invite us to focus our attention around the theme of walking in the light, the light of God. I want us to think about what it means for us to reflect the light of God in our daily lives. I want us to celebrate the fact that the light of God is a gift to us, a light that transforms us and enables us to reflect a transforming light into the world. Walking in the light of God, reflecting the light of God, is a privilege that God has given to us, and it makes a difference in the world around us. Walking in the light is a gift, and walking in the light is our response in faith to the call that God has placed on all of our lives. Our text for this morning reads, You are the light of the world. Now just notice with me that that's a statement. It's not a question. It's a proclamation. It's spoken with authority. Jesus says to those who are in his hearing, and I believe to each one of us, you are the light of the world. You are ambassadors of God's love. You are a reflection of God's light in the world. That's who God in Christ declares us to be. That's who we are. Do we really recognize who we are? Are we walking in the light for real? <clears throat> Some years ago, a story was told of a 30-year-old man who spent most of his life as an imposter. At the age of 16, he posed as an airline pilot. At, I, at, at 19, he was a pediatrician, he said. Later, he was a district attorney. He was caught in the end. But by the time he had been caught, he had passed checks amounting to $2.5 million. He was not who he appeared to be. He was not walking in the light of God. Our Old Testament lesson from Isaiah today challenges the church. It challenges us. It challenges me. Do we think we're walking in the light of God? Are we pretending to walk in the light of God? And really, are we walking in the light of our own thinking? The church of Isaiah's day was, in their estimation, walking in the light of God. They were good church-going people. They were a fasting people. They were a religious people. But were they really walking in the light of God? How many of us are fasting people? Some of us did a sugar fast a couple of months ago. I didn't realize how addictive sugar can be until I engaged in the fast. 
Some of us just finished a 31-day fast, losing weight God's way. And I thank God for what we are learning about walking in the light of God and taking care of our bodies and improving our health and remembering who we are as children of God who are trying, striving to live as the people that God calls us to be walking in the light, are we? Sometimes people tell us they don't want to have anything to do with the church. Why? Because they say there are too many hypocrites up in the church. <laughs> the trouble is that we Christians don't always know who we are and we don't always act accordingly. It is so important as Christians, as people walking in the light, that we strive to be genuine. They dare not be a phony or a hypocrite. We dare not. The world is quite right in judging the truth of Jesus by the sort of people whose faith in Jesus is not always demonstrated. So the question for us is, as Christians, who are we? The answer to that question comes from Jesus to us today. In the first two verses of the gospel lesson, he says we are salt, we are light. Now you ought to be salt, or you ought to be light. You are salt. You are like, what a tremendous saying. After all, what Jesus is saying is this. You disciples standing before me today, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. Isaiah speaks to those who claim that they were walking in the light. In verse 2, the verse that is not included in our periphery, he says, yet day after day they seek me and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practiced righteousness and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask me of righteous judgments. They delight to draw near to God. Isaiah calls out the church of the day. He says, you're going through the motions. You're pretending to walk in the light. You are an imposter. You fast. You sing the songs. You pray the prayers. You do the liturgy. You make the sacrifices. You give the offerings. You attend the classes. You, you fast, Isaiah declared, but you fast to serve your own interests. You fast because you think it's the right thing to do. You fast because you think it will make you look good. You fast, and yet you quarrel among yourselves. You fast, but you do not care for those in need. You fast. I didn't say this, but I'm going to say it. But you don't go vote. You fast, but you do not address the concerns of the community. You fast, but you ignore the injustices that's going on all around. You fast, but there are people that you don't speak to. You fast, but you're still angry at someone, and you don't even remember why. You fast, but we are challenged by our reading today to do more than just go through the religious motions. We are challenged to do more than just come to church and feel good about what we have done. We are challenged to do more than sing about walking in the light. We are challenged to walk in the light when we walk out of the sanctuary. We are challenged to walk in the light when we're talking to one another in the parking lot. We are challenged to walk in the light when we're sending those text messages. We are challenged to walk in the light when we're posting on our social media. We are challenged to walk in the light when we're talking on the phone. We are challenged to walk in the light when somebody complains to us about what somebody else did not do or did do. We are challenged to walk in the light when we're driving our cars. We are challenged to walk in the light when we encounter our family and our friends or our neighbors doing things that we don't find acceptable. We are challenged to walk in the light when we see injustices in our community. We are challenged to walk in the light when we hear national leaders making statements that we do not find to be true in our own experience. We are challenged to walk in the light when darkness seems to find its way into our own lives, and darkness will come. In the portals of prayer for this morning, Job is in the dark. He's crying out, and he even says, God, why don't you just take me, crush me? I don't want to be here anymore. But God didn't take him. He brought him through. He shined some light into his life. Not only are we challenged to walk in the light, we are empowered to walk in the light of God. Hear it again. Jesus says, you are the light of the world. 
Oh yeah, we know there's darkness all around us. We know there are challenges in our communities. We know that we fall short of the glory of God. We know that we sometimes go through the motions. We know that we struggle with our own sinful behavior. We know that we sometimes prefer the dark than the light. We know that there are some stuff that we do in the dark that we want to stay in the dark. Darkness invades our lives. Dark things happen to us. We experience the darkness of defeat. We experience the darkness of rejection. We experience the darkness of injustice. We experience all kinds of disappointment and darkness in life. And so did the disciples of Jesus. And he speaks to them even as he speaks to us today. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hidden. Jesus had just described how blessed are those who have faith in him. It's the Beatitudes, the verses just before our lesson today. Jesus says, blessed are those who are poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit eternal life. No matter what darkness creeps into our lives, there is a light shining on us that we are blessed to reflect. This light that we have, we did not create. This light of the world that we have shines on us no matter what comes to us. When someone finally figures something out that they did not understand, we use the phrase, the light finally came on. They finally got it. They understand whatever it was that was confusing them in the past. My brothers and my sisters, none of us are perfect. We don't get everything right all the time, but we can rejoice and we can say the light has come to us. The light has come on for us, and we are walking in the light. We are different. Our darkness has been exposed and forgiven, and we are walking in the light of God. We've been baptized. We are followers of Jesus who do not just believe differently. We live differently. Let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works, Jesus said. Following Jesus is more than just personal enlightenment. Shades in the windows are good for privacy. But don't draw down the shades of your faith that you live through the week. A covered up lamp is a waste of light and so is a concealed faith. You are the light of the world. That is a blessing and it is a responsibility. Following Jesus isn't just for our personal benefit. It calls us to be the hope of the world. Oh, it's easy to find fault with society. It's common for us to complain that things are going from bad to worse and that evil seems to be spreading everywhere. No doubt Jesus could see that in his day as well. But instead of hand wringing, instead of complaining, Jesus one by one, brought people out of the darkness into the light. Then the ones that he brought to the light of faith, he sent to make holes in the darkness wherever they went. God's people are God's force in the world, a force to be reckoned with. And how does our light shine? Maybe not through heroic acts or feats of superhuman strength, not through brilliant insights or miraculous powers, but by following Jesus, living like Jesus did, touching lives, one person at a time, one smile at a time, the light of Christ shines in the ordinary life of every believer. And we are not called to live in an ordinary way. Because the Spirit of God is moving us, and Christ lives in us, we are extraordinary people of God. That light that shines is Jesus, and we should be happy to give him all the credit. We can do no good thing apart from him. Light bulbs come in all different sizes and shapes. We do too. Whatever your shape, whatever your color, because of Jesus, you are the light in the world. That's what Jesus said. So walk in the light. Walk in the light as you leave church. Walk in the light as you go to your homes. Walk in the light at school. Walk in the light. Reflect the light, the love of Jesus, wherever you go and with whoever you meet. For Jesus, the light of the world, loves you. And he is with you always. That's his promise. Amen. 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 We can stand and pray with you.
Gracious God, we thank you for sending your Son, our Savior, Jesus, into this world, into our world, to be the light who takes away the sin of the world and gives us the gift of everlasting life. May we reflect that light in our daily lives. And now, God, may your peace, which surpasses 